In this video, I'll talk about David Hume on off standards of taste. David Hume was born on 1711 and died on 1776. He was a Scottish philosopher, historian, and essayist. He was best known for his philosophy of empiricism, skepticism, naturalism. I'll discuss all these terms in separate video. David Hume views on aesthetic theory and the philosophy of art to be found in his work on moral theory and in several essays devoted to art. Of standard of taste and of tragedy, his views on art and aesthetic judgment are intimately connected to his moral philosophy and theories of human thoughts and emotions. Of standard of taste is a work by David Hume. He had published his four essays in collection. Of standard of taste is one from that collection that was published in 1757. The article starts with the statement popular to think there is wide difference between judgment and sentiment. It seems that Hume transition in the beginning, it seems like he's saying that it is necessary to consider taste is something that can't be accounted for. You can't account for taste. People have their own subjective opinion and that's we all can do now. In the first paragraph, he's giving his opinion that is different. So difference in judgment of taste that is judging whether the piece of art is beautiful or not. An aesthetic object has aesthetic qualities. He starts with this idea that there is no account for taste. He further says that all sentiments are right because sentiments have no reference beyond themselves. But all judgment of understanding is not right. There is sentimental judgments like I like this village or I like apple. This is understanding judgment, which are a little deeper. It is a part of our psychology that makes judgment about our emotions and sentiments. He argues that there is a position that says that everybody's taste is subjective means that it changes person to person. He further says that there is right wrong judgment of taste. So it may be thought that beauty exists only in perceiver's mind, not in object means that it is up to person that how he perceives something. To seek real beauty is as fruitless to seek real sweetness. Then he says that, but while this natural equality of taste seems to have been approved by common sense, another kind of common sense disapproved that. Whoever would assert an equality of genius and elegance between, here he gives an example of the writers of his time that are Ogilvy, a minor writer, and Milton, a genius. Here he compares them and says that nobody will say that there is equality of genius between Ogilvy and Milton. Popular are not always great, certainly, but we choose familiar ones, whether in art, film, music. This judgment is based on standard of taste, and that is Hume's point. It is clear that there is no rule of composition terrible for abstract reasoning. This article is about literature. He is writing about the art of literature. But the consensus of philosopher of art is that he meant his word to apply to other arts as well besides just literature. So we can't reason our way to what would be rules of composition that will make a work of literature great. Their foundation is experience. So... The rules of taste are from experience, though art must be subject to rule discovered by artists of genius, like Homer, who was praised 25 years ago, is still admired today. There are certain principles of approval or blame. These principles are uniformity of sentiments among those people, that is, if lots of people agrees on something, we drive an idea of beauty. So what kinds of standard does a person need to capable of recognizing a beauty? So there are three things that are delicacy, practice and good sense. So delicacy is that senses or organs able to perceive every ingredient in composition and practice is experience in these kind of artworks. Good sense uses reason to perfect one taste by comparison of work with each other. Good senses needed in order to compare different pieces of art with each other.
and be clear of prejudice organs of internal sensation are seldom so perfect as to perceive general principle of beauty a true judge in fine arts is rare a joint verdict of such judges is the true standard of taste and beauty best we can do is to produce the best arguments in this article hume tries to find a standard by which we may settle aesthetic disputes in setting out a genuine problem in aesthetics with such sophistication he made a significant contribution to aesthetic philosophy thank you so much if this video was helpful give it big thumbs up and subscribe my channel